Welcome to another episode of DD on the Spot. As always, I'm your host, Ryan Johnson. If you've been listening to this podcast for a while, you're going to recognize our guest. We have Alexandra back on the podcast. It's been a little bit over a year and a half. She's coming to us all the way from the UK again. And yeah, she's on here to share an update with us. She just got done with the Portugal Pro. And yeah, we're just here to talk about what she's been up to since we last had her on. Alexandra, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you for having me again. Absolutely. Well, let's just jump right into the What's been going on? So it's been a year and a half since we last had you on. What have you been up to? Um, so basically, um, I competed at the Arnolds in October 21. I got my pro card, which is amazing. And decided to take some time out off season. I wanted to grow. I wanted to, um, you know, improve for my pro debut. So um, I've been sort of hidden away, growing, working in the background for the last 18 months. Um, and then I did Pro, uh, Portugal Pro, which was about a week and a half ago now. Um, yeah, so I was super, super happy with how it went. Um, my one goal, because it was, you know, going into the unknown of like the Pro League, you know it's a big step up, um, going against these amazing athletes, you know, Olympians and like just the best in the world. So I went in there with no really expectations, except I just wanted to look like I fit in and like I belonged on that stage. Um, I wanted to bring an improved package from the Arnold's 21. So, um, yeah, did the Portugal Pro, placed top 10, which was unbelievable. Um, and ticked all those boxes. I felt like I belonged up there. I was improved. Um, and I had really good feedback from the judges. So, yeah, over the moon with how it went, really. It's, it's, it was an unreal experience as well. Just being backstage and seeing these names that I've seen at the Olympia or like people I've seen on social media walking past me looking insane. Um, you know, seeing the other ca- uh, categories, seeing like the men's. I was backstage at the same time as the two one two class, and I was just like, these men are like massive. Like I've never seen a human that big. Um, yeah, and it was just unbelievable. My first um, international, not international, I'm sorry, my first show abroad. So the travel was an experience. Um, peaking in a different country, peaking in a country where the temperature is a lot hotter than the UK. (laughs) Uh, A lot more vainier, I'd guess, because of the temperature. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) Um, You know, dealing with that, things that I wasn't necessarily aware of, um, you know, just because of the temperature. And obviously in peak week, you're, um, you're playing with your water a little bit. So, you know, the the dehydration was a concern. Sun, I couldn't step in the sun. I, I tried to sunbathe on one day, which was about five days before. And I sat in the shade with, uh, you know, an umbrella over me. And even in the shade, I started burning after about 20 minutes. So I spent the first five days in Portugal hidden away in my hotel room, trying not to get the sunburn, trying not to get tan lines. Um, yeah, so just... The experience of competing abroad, you know, having to find a way to cook all the food, finding the gyms, getting around. Um, It was amazing. It was just such an incredible experience. Um, And, you know, even since I've been home, the the positive uh, response I've had from everyone on social media, and it's just been incredible. I'm still flying high, as you can tell. I'm just in, on cloud nine with it all <laughs> what is one thing that you found unexpected about a pro show because there's not really that much talk at least on at least on this podcast about what the differences between really the pro shows and the amateur shows are what was one thing about a pro show that really surprised you um standard probably um i i turned up to registration and i sat and i was looking at all these other athletes and every single one of them were like elite level. These girls, you know, I've never seen the wellness girls. I've never seen legs like that. 
on a female and you see the social media pictures, it doesn't translate. In real life, the standard is insane. Um, and it just like opened my eyes to the levels of this sport. You know, I know just because I've got my pro card and I've reached the pro league, there are still levels <laughs> to, to, to get to, to reach, um, which is exciting because it gives me something to motivate me and keep pushing forward, you know. Um, what else about the pro league? The competition was really well organised. It ran beautifully from registration to the start of the show, the tanning, the hair, the makeup backstage. Um, it was like perfect. Um, what else? The the stage itself was um, insane. I don't know if you've seen the Portugal Pro stage, but um, they've got the rotating thing that you stand on and it spins. So that was like... <laughs> Oh my gosh, that was just crazy. Um, but yeah, I would say this, this, the standard um, and just how how well it was run was real different to like you know the amateur competitions that I have I've been to. Yeah, it seems like it's a, one of the people's favorite shows out, especially for the European guests that I have on. But what's one area of your physique that you think you improved on the most since we last had you on a year and a half ago? Um, so when I went into off season, it was kind of like I needed overall size everywhere. It wasn't just focus on one area. It was everything needs to improve. So I think I've done a good job of sort of doing that, bringing up every area a little bit. Um, I think I improved on my glutes, um, don't get me wrong, I need to keep improving them. <laughs> but that was definitely an area that was like a highlight um, at the Arnold's. My arms, they got hammering over. We the can tell, thing. we can tell. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, just, just everything. It was kind of overall size that I was uh, aiming for. So, but yeah, and it still will be that because I just, I want everything to be bigger. <laughs> Did you change things up at all with your nutrition? Um, so for, actually yeah, I did for the first time. I kept my coach all the way through off season. Um, normally I kind of, I kind of do it myself. I obviously stick to a plan, but it, I, I set the plan. Um, and I was, I'd be a bit more flexible and, and kind of have a bit more variety. But this was the first time that I kept my coach all the way through. Um, and he kept me accountable, you know, and it was weekly check-ins. I wanted to do it properly leading up to the pro debut, and I wanted to give him that 18 months to really know how my physique was working, how my body was working. So when we came to prep, he'd he'd know all the data. He'd have it, you know. So, yeah, I guess that's what I would do. That's what I did differently. I had a lot less cheat meals. I had a lot um, – just a much cleaner off-season, you know. And that's the plan this time as well. I'm keeping him. And I think um, my plan is to keep things really strict. Um, it's kind of doing Portugal has opened my eyes to what needs to be done. And, and yeah, I'm, I'm on it. I'm actually sort of going to keep treating it like I'm on prep, to be honest. So, yeah. If you were to rank all of your preps, how would this last one rank? Would it be on more on the harder side or would it, be, it have been more on the easier side? <laughs> I'll, be, I'll be completely honest. This was probably the hardest prep I've ever done. Um, I have no idea why. Um, because I've, you know, I've had some tough preps. I think this being my pro debut, it added like a subconscious pressure Um which made me, some might call it like anxiety or stress, or but it just gave me an extra kind of on edge at all times. Um, but in terms of diet and cardio, yeah, this is the lowest my food had to go, um, lower than the Arnold's, and the cardio, yeah, higher, two hours cardio a day. So it was tough, 
but it was worthwhile. And stepping on that stage, I instantly was like, oh, it was worth every, every second, every second of cardio, every second of hunger, worth it. Yeah. <laughs> Two hours. How do you keep yourself preoccupied on that treadmill? So to be honest, I, I split that. So I would do an hour in the morning and then train my weight session mid-afternoon. And then the second hour would be in the evening then before bed um I'll tell you what did make this prep hard and I I think again I mentioned about the the added pressure the added uh anxiety my sleep went absolutely terrible from day one of prep from 26 weeks out my sleep was gone couldn't couldn't get a wink um so I had to remove all caffeine from my day so normally I would have like a pre-workout I'd have my coffee in the morning if I was hungry coffee's really good at curbing your appetite um but because I couldn't sleep I had to take away all my caffeine and that made prep hard I'd I'd say (laughs) that made it a lot tougher um but yeah so have you had your British card revoked yet since you're drinking coffee in the morning and not tea I do mix it up now, like, um, I mean, on prep, it's black coffee or black tea, and I think black coffee is a bit nicer than black tea, but... You drink black (laughs) coffee. I need to have it so much sweetener and so much sugar in it that, like, I can barely even taste the coffee. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, again, that is, that is insane, but... How were you even functioning off that lack of sleep? Because I, I'm not going to lie. I've started doing all my, my like late night walks. I literally just got done with mine half an hour ago. And I have been having trouble with sleep probably like the last month or so. How have you been dealing with that? Well, um, I mean, there's, there's kind of things that you can do. So the first one, like I said, remove the coffee, uh, the caffeine. Um, make sure that you're not on your phone you know, an hour before you go to bed, the, the blue screen of the phone is going to keep your your awake. Um, supplements you can use help ZMA, that kind of thing. Um, what else? Taking a, a bath before bed, like an Epsom salt bath, it soothes you, relaxes you. Um, yeah, those are a few of the things that I would I would have used. I did use. Um, just making sure you, you know, you give yourself enough time to wind down, um, not eating too late before you go to bed. So I would have my last meal at like 9 p.m., go to bed, and then I'd have like half an hour in bed of just trying to calm down, trying to turn my brain off because it's my head that was keeping me awake. My body was screaming for sleep, you know, just let me sleep. I'm so tired. But my brain wouldn't switch off. So... Well, the problem with me is that I would normally eat like right before I went to bed and then you would just wake up like three hours later and then you wouldn't have a, you know, you would have uninterrupted sleep would be almost impossible. But one thing that we didn't talk about in the last podcast, which is so important, especially in this lifestyle is massages and all that jazz. How frequently do you go? Because I just started getting them myself and it makes me feel like an idiot that I hadn't done it years ago. Yeah, well, actually, I'm in the same boat as you. So I um I used to go for massages quite regularly, but for whatever reason, this prep, whether I was just being tight, you know, with expenses or I, for some reason I just didn't go. I just didn't think I needed to. Um, I used to go when, oh, I feel a bit tight, so I'm going to go get a massage. That, that was just it. Um, but it was about two weeks out when I went for a massage and – um she she was very gentle and even the gentlest pressure on my quads was painful and she said you are in a mess your legs are so tight and this hit me really hard she said because my muscles are so tight it would restrict any of the growth from my off season because there's no space for that muscle to grow so you know, to me, that's like, oh, my gosh, I've I've missed the trick here. You're saying that I could have grown more if I had had looser muscles. And that might sound silly, like that might sound like common sense, but I just missed 
missed that one uh, completely. So yeah, now I've I've committed with my massage girl uh, every fortnight, and it's booked in advance, and I'm not going to miss a single session this whole off season. So that's the plan, and hopefully that will give me some bigger bigger growth, bigger quads. <laughs> Please don't tell me you get those painful ones where, like, I see photos at the end and the people's backs look like they're just, they've just been beaten up. Yeah, the ones where they like get their elbows in you, you know, like. <laughs> I I've seen those painful. and I'm just like, yeah. I mean, but hey, I've heard also that those do wonders, so I can't really complain about them too much. I haven't gotten them myself, but yeah, it's just it is crazy. And going into the show, I mean, what was your mindset going into it? Did you? place as high as you thought you were going to or where'd you end up in the grand scheme of it well to be honest I felt you know I was I was nervous going in I'm not gonna pretend um I'd really hyped this up in my head way more than I should have um normally when I competed before I had um you know a quiet confidence I knew that I was going in and I had a shot for my pro card. So there wasn't nervousness. Um, but this, I don't know whether it, whether it's because I thought it's much more exposure. Everyone's going to see what I bring to this stage. The pro, you know, it's a pro league. I was really nervous. And I thought, honestly, I'm coming dead last. Um, that was <laughs> in my head going in. So when I didn't, um, you know, we did our stage time, we did our quarter turns, our comparisons, and go backstage and they call who they want for the top 10. I sat down and I was packing my bag thinking, I was texting my partner saying, oh, I'll meet you backstage in a minute. And then they called my number. And I was just like, oh. and that's when it hit me. I'm going to have to do my routine now. Oh, my God. <laughs> Panic as I quickly text back saying, wait, 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 they've called me for finals. Um, jump up, <laughs> run round to the front again. Yeah, so I went in with no expectations and I was super surprised and just so happy that I, I made a top 10 lineup in my first go. So, yeah. To be honest as well, if I wasn't so nervous, I, I might have posed a bit better because I was a little bit shaky on my posing. Um, and I think that might have affected the, the judging a little bit. <laughs> but who knows? <laughs> so what exactly was the feedback? Was it just overall you just needed to grow a little bit or did they list anything specific? Um, so basically, um, really good feedback. Like the biggest compliment that I could ask for, which was my frame and my structure is top tier, top tier level. And they loved it. I just need to fill it. I just need to fill it with more muscle, which I knew that going in. I think that's always been because I'm tall. I've got long limbs. I'm I'm five foot eight. Um, if I have, you know, if I haven't got enough muscle on my frame, I look skinny. Well, not skinny, but you know what I'm trying to say. Compared to the shorter girls, I've got the long long muscles, um, whereas short girls have shorter mus shorter shorter limbs bigger muscles but it's not I do way more I do have the muscle it's just stretched across a longer bone structure um but yeah for them to say my structure was top tier is like because you can't build bone structure it's what you're given genetically um it's what you're born with you know um that was just such a good compliment and it's really kind of given me the the motivation I need to go away and act Add more muscle, you know. This is it. This is what I want. I want to be. I want to be up there with the top girls. Oh, that's one of the best compliments you can actually get because, like they said, putting on size—that's the easy thing to do compared to like that. You can't like restructure your entire frame, but like they said, yeah, the base is there and and the structure is there. So yeah, that's some of the best feedback you could probably actually get. But what is one area that you are looking forward to most when it comes to the nutrition side in your off season? Um, to be honest, so usually post competition, um, I have like a, a few days after the show, eat what I want, get those kind of cravings out of the way. And then I go into my off season plan 
and I have weekly cheat meals um, or if I fancy something here and there, I'll have it. But this time it's different. I, I did have a couple of days post-show in Portugal because I kind of treated it like a holiday afterwards, a little, little bit of a celebration, you know. Um, I've come back to my off-season plan, which is it's the same food types that I have on prep. It's just a higher amount. It's all clean. It's all, you know, it's all good, nutritious food. But I don't want a cheat meal. I am not craving anything. Um, my coach has told me, like, if you want something, have something. Your body's, um, you know, it's telling you it needs stuff now. So you can give it what it wants. It's grow time. Um, but there's nothing. I am craving eating clean. I'm craving um, that good, nutritious food. Um, so, yeah, that's a bit of a different scenario for me to be in. Um, I'm really enjoying eating clean food, but more of it, you know. There's there's no hunger. It's just feeling healthy. I guess after such a long prep, feeling healthy is is important to me right now. Yeah. Well, and you mentioned your coach and what in your opinion makes a coach a good coach? Because so many times I've talked to people on this podcast that have experiences with bad coaches. Cause I, I do think they outnumber the good coaches, but in your own personal opinion, cause everyone has a different opinion about it. What makes a coach a good coach? Um, so, I mean, there's so many things, but firstly, knowledge, you know, like <laughs> that's probably like a given, but um, knowledge, experience, um, communication. So, for example, like in peak week, I'm having messages from my coach, like all all day. You know, like he's he's wanting me to check in an hour after every meal. Um, he's and bear in mind, I was in Portugal and he's in the US. So there's a massive time difference. But the response from him is instant. You know, there's no messing around. Whatever time of the night it is for him, he's getting back to me because it's that important to him. Which I'm sorry, if you're messaging me at like 8 or 9 a.m. your time, there's no way in hell I'm getting back to you. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> exactly. Um, so, yeah, the communication side of it is so important. Um, and and just his knowledge, you know, just it, it blows my mind some of the, the stuff that he he did. Like, for example, like a week out, I had no um, – for me, I had not enough definition in my legs. I was a bit panicking, thinking, oh, I'm not going to be ready for this competition. I'm just not. There's no way. And with the, the, the kind of – carb loading and the water and the the magic that he put me through for the week of of peak week I woke up on show day and my legs you know every line was there every vein was visible and it was like how did he know <laughs> but you just have to trust the coach you just have to that's why you buy that's why you hire a coach right what if he was just BSing and it just happened to be lucky that you woke up like that? <laughs> he just say, hey, you know, hey, you never know that that might have. Hey, I wouldn't, I wouldn't blame it either way because that, that's great too. But yeah, I mean, it's it's always got to do your research too when finding a coach as well. I mean, so many people I've talked to, their bad experiences are because they just dive right in with a coach without really doing their research and realizing that like, Hey, he might not know as much as, you know, some other people, but yeah, like you said, knowledge by far the most important thing when talking to a lot of coaches, but one thing that I found fascinating, especially over like the last year when I started really getting into this with a lot of competitors is for so many competitors, that look that they present on stage is not their favorite look. If you were to like ask them, like, what do you prefer your look? A lot of times it's like the three to four weeks outlook, or maybe a little bit earlier than that, or just a, you know, there might be like a week difference in that, but is your stage look your favorite look or are you like a few of guests that I've had on that actually prefer the like four weeks outlook where you're not like so shredded, but you still have a lot of the size and definition? Um, yeah, that's a good question. So it's actually changed for me, my opinion. Normally I would answer saying that, like, I love being stage lean, like that condition, that, you know, freaky, just you've not seen it anywhere, that kind of shredded. 
But this year, I'm really enjoying the way I'm looking after the show, after I've eaten. I think it's because I was I was so depleted from prep that I was, you know, just everything was so flat. Um, and then I've come away from the show, I've had the food and my food's gone up and every muscle's just pumped and full now. And I'm really enjoying that. Your shoulders are literally flexing by just standing there really this whole time. So it's, yeah, yeah. It's, it's ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, my, my body and my muscles are loving the food. Uh, so, yeah, I think I'm liking this this look at the moment. <laughs> I'm going to enjoy this as long as I can as well. So. How long does it usually last before it finally you finally just start to come back? Not to normal, but you finally start to just. Is it for like a month or is there a time period or does it change? It, it changes. It depends how, how good I am as well, you know, with the food. Um, the the stricter I am now, the longer it will last. Um, but I think probably like six to eight weeks where I start, yes, the, the condition will start to go. But then also it depends how hard we push the food up. So it's already been um increased like threefold so i i mean i was dieting down on less than a thousand calories and i'm on three thousand now and it's only a week and a half later so we're pushing it quite hard quite fast so who knows how long it's gonna last with the condition less than a thousand calories and you're doing two hours of cardio how and you're five yeah. eight two how is yeah. These people, these people are crazy, everyone. I mean, it's just, but hey, it's in in a good way. But good God, I, I could not imagine that. But more power to you for being able to do that. That's just, that is incredible. But I mentioned this before, sorry, recording. those photos behind you are awesome. How did you get a hold of those? Because those are, I mean, more people, honestly, who compete should have that. Thank you. I love my photos. Um, so I just got them online, actually. Um so I've obviously purchased the stage shots. Um, this company online, you can just send them and they, they print them off and, and, and post them out to you. So, yeah. But I've got, I've, I've got one, two, three, four, I've got five. I need to update my wall with my pro debut. Yeah. We've got some really good stage pictures, so I will do that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. What was your favorite part about Portugal outside of the show? The food. <laughs> what was your favorite? So, oh, we had quite a bit of food, I will not lie. Um, we found a beautiful breakfast restaurant which had like American style pancakes, big breakfast, you know, eggs, sausage, baked beans, all that. That was beautiful. Um, the Portuguese baked beans is not American style, by the way. I'll just put that out there. Oh, okay, we do so not have baked that baked over there. <laughs> they, they incorporate a little bit of it. Yeah, I have never had baked beans. I don't think ever since I was like a kid, anyways. But that's that's more of a dinner that's thing a over here. Thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um. So the Portuguese tarts, the pasta de natas, they were really good. Um. Um. I had a few too many of those uh, afterwards. <laughs> Um, but yeah, beautiful restaurants. Our, our hotel was very close to the seafront, so loads of fish restaurants and sushi. Um, and you know, in, in the sun, in the beautiful weather, it was just just perfect. When you talk about, I mean, you're on social media a lot. Do you ever struggle with the fact that you can just look at the people that you're competing against as profiles, and you can kind of get a get an idea of what they're gonna be like? But here's the problem: sometimes they might. I'm not saying that people like change their foes, but they can, with proper angles, they can make themselves look better than they do. But have you ever struggled with, you know, just glaring at some people's other profiles and comparing yourself to them? Because I'm going to be honest, that would be me a hundred percent. Yeah. To be honest with you, that's um, it's something I might, I might have used to do, um, but learned very quickly that it's, it's not a good idea. So I kind of knowingly avoid looking for people who might be competing against me because you're just winding yourself up. You know, you're adding pressure to yourself and social media is a lot of the time it's, it's not real. You know, these people, like you said, 
edit their photos or, you know, good angles, good lighting, they look bigger than they really are. Um, I've, I've said it to a few of my clients. They, you know, they send me a picture or a profile and say, this girl's doing my show. This is who I'm going against. And I'll say, so? Why are you looking? Why, why are you adding that to your, your worries? She's not going to look like that. She, you don't know what she's going to look like. You don't know how tall she is. And there's been times where they've competed against the girl, they've turned up, and they've gone, oh, my God, she looks nothing like it. She's half the size that her pictures make her look. So, yeah, I, I avoid it. It's unnecessary. If it pops up on my feed and I accidentally see someone who says, oh, I'm competing in Portugal, blah, 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 then great, I see it. But I just try not to let it bother me, you know. I'm bringing my best package. That's all I can do. So when you're on less than a 1,000 calories and doing two hours of cardio, how are you dealing with clients at all? Because if that – if you were to put a gun to my head and say I had to do that, I would say, okay, the only way that's going to be possible is that I need to have no communication with really anyone else. I need to just be all by myself. How do you do that? Because I would be literally a letter of a word away from just snapping on someone if I was at that extreme. Um, I'll be honest. So my prep clients, they got a much tougher prep coach this year because I kind of, felt like if I'm going through all this you guys are definitely gonna suffer too <laughs> which sounds horrible um but no I, I just mean that I was a bit more you know there was no playing around with the diet you cheat your diet because I'm not cheating my diet so why would you um there's no 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 room for excuses with me being on prep at the same time um so yeah, but um, but also, so I, I prep people, but I, you know, I also work full time as well in software engineering. <laughs> so yeah, lots to juggle with with prep and cardio and work. But I love it. Did you have any funny brain farts happen during this prep? Um, yeah, absolutely. So this is the first prep where I've had proper prep brain. You know, they they say prep brains kicked in. And things start happening where your brain just doesn't function. Um, so, like, usually I'm really, um, I'm actually more on the ball on prep. It kind of makes me sharper. But this, this year, like I said, it was a hard prep. It went differently. Uh, on the day we left for the hotel, uh, for, sorry, for the airport, I walked out the front door and left the door open. And we got about an hour down the road. Um, we'd ha I'd had a delivery, and you know that they say they send you a picture to confirm your delivery's arrived. I opened my phone, and there's a picture of my front door wide open, and we're an hour down the road. So yeah, that was prep brain. Just da da da, <laughs> leave the door open as I'm like not even thinking. Um, just booking all the holiday stuff whilst on prep seemed to not go very well for example I booked a hire car and prep brain booked the wrong time slot for collection so when we got off the plane and went to collect it no one was there um they shut the shop for the day and no one was answering the phone so um, and I looked on the booking and I'd put bu I'd put in two hours earlier arrival than we were and did you make a post about that because i could have swore that i remember something like that on your story or something like that yeah i think yeah. i posted something but yeah no absolutely my fault because my brain at the time didn't register that the timing would be important things like that loads of things happened on on the trip that was just catastrophic um you know our suitcase we arrived at the airport and it was 19 kilos too heavy and they wanted 150 euros extra. Um, the hire car. The hotel didn't have a kitchen in the room. Um, so we had to go buy an air fryer. Just just dramas. But it's all learning curve. And it's a lot harder to be super organized when your brain's like fighting you <laughs> for logic and sense. Um, 
but yeah, working in software, luckily that wasn't affected. I, I'm I'm really lucky that I enjoy my job and and I do it well, so I was able to do that fine. Um, for prep clients, I did say to them that you know the week of the show, let's just you know speak to me after Sunday. <laughs> let's just take a take a little quiet time and we'll we'll catch up after. So yeah. <laughs> do you think that there's anything that the bodybuilding federation can do specifically for taller people to sort of help and make things a little bit fair? Because as a taller guy myself, I've always you know the, had a sweet spot for the tall competitors because I sympathize with them. For me, it's just like if they put you on stage with someone who's like five feet tall or some of the shorter girls, it's just really hard to judge you and compare you. Yeah, I mean, I agree with you. It, it's just so difficult with the, you know, there's some classes that have the, you know, the height and the the weight caps, um, and that makes it a lot fairer. And they're doing the same. I think they've just brought in a um, weight cap on men's physique. So you know, it's something that they they're obviously expanding it to the other categories um you know I agree it would make it fairer but then it would also make it much more complicated for things like the Olympia because you then have height classes and then the winners of the height classes would go on to the final and it would just make the whole process a lot longer and the Olympia already is quite um you know, there's quite a lot of athletes that they have to get through judging. So I don't know if they need that added. Oh, I don't know. It's, it's difficult. Um, what I do think is um, with my big frame, if I could add the size, the height issue won't be a problem, you know, because a full filled tall frame is going to look quite impressive. So... There's always a positive and a negative to anything when you're trying to add it on, especially when it comes to, you know, the extra federations. But this is a question that I haven't come up with yet, and I just was thinking about it. But what is one exercise when you see it on your workout plan? You're like, okay, it's going to be a great day. And what's one exercise that if you see it on your workout plan, you almost want to cry? <laughs> um, so I didn't mention this, actually, but. In my off season, um, after the Arnolds, I did have a bit of an injury. Um, I had an issue with my hip, which was causing sciatica. Um, so I had a little bit of time where I was just kind of rehabbing my injury, wasn't able to really train legs as hard as I would like to, you know. Um, but the exercise that triggered my injury was hack squat. So... I do have a little bit of a, like, I see that on the plan and I'm like, oh, no, here we go again. And I got I have to be careful because, you know, I love pushing hard in the gym. I push to failure. So, and that's where the injury did occur. It, it, it's difficult. I want to push to failure, but I'm like, oh, I don't want to injure myself again. So I do take that carefully. Um, as for my favourite exercise that's really difficult um there's so many that I love doing like I've just started doing cable crossover for chest and I never never enjoyed it before I always thought like I it sounds a bit silly but I was like this is a boy's exercise <laughs> um but I've started doing it and I love it and I'm like why have I not done this exercise and it looks that amazing. pump that you get from that is unreal too yeah, so I'm really loving that. I love training chest at the moment, probably my favourite. Um, but, yeah, there's so many I love. I've really taken to training arms as well. Um, arms used to be my least favourite thing to train, but now I, I really look forward to it because the pump and it's just insane. And I think having worked so hard on my arms in the off season, the connection I have, you know, the mind to muscle connection is such an improvement that I'm, I, I really, I can hit them properly now, which is great. What's your favorite arm exercise? Mm, I've got on my plan at the moment, I've got pinwheel curls. What are those? So instead of doing like a hammer curl where yeah. you kind of like are straight up and down, 
you bring it across your body. Oh. So um, I really like them because it makes my arms look really big, bigger than they actually are. <laughs> and then in the mirror, I'm like, whoa, look how big my arms are. <laughs> Do you ever wear the thing where like you put it over your tr- and then you you have them like that because I've seen people do I forgot whatever that's called and those things make your arms look like twice their size easily yeah yeah I have tried so back in lockdown um we were obviously all training from home locked away um but yeah I bought one of those and they do because your arms go flat against it they just make your arms look massive um but yeah they're not very comfortable to to use but. That's more of an what? that's more of an aesthetic thing, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, and that's I mean, I honestly for me it would just be burnout sets that I would just do curls where I just, you know, go up and down the ladder basically and then that's always the funny thing is that you'll have a friend make fun of you because you'll be curling 10 pounds at the very end and almost crying just just so hard. So, yeah, it's it's all about that. Yeah. But, what <laughs> I mean, when we talk about you talked about time under tension too and that's something that you know, needs to be definitely talked about and discussed more because so many people, when they get started in the gym, just don't apply it so much, but it's also something that is not really dependent on your entire body. It can be really easy on one body part and really hard on another. Was there one body part that you struggle with the most when it comes to time under tension? Cause for me, I'm just going to be completely honest with you. It was everything legs where you try to get me to do time under tension during that. And it is just, it's hell. Yeah. Um, it's got to be legs. Um, I think, I mean, yeah, legs in general are just, when you're, when you're really pushing towards the, the end of, uh, you know, like that extreme of fail, going to failure or time under tension, like you said, or even drop sets or anything like that, legs, it's, gets really painful sometimes <laughs> and you have to go heavier because it's like a much bigger muscle group I don't know just legs definitely what's your best piece of advice for someone who's trying to work through an injury like how you work through yours because a lot of people just assume well and again it all depends on your injury where like again a lot of people have so many injuries where it's like or have a specific degree of an injury where obviously they can't work out on it. But if you can, is there any advice that you have for people on how to try to work around an injury? Um, yeah, so what I would say, and this is what I learned from the guy that did my rehab. So most of the time an injury is down to your form um, or the way you're performing an exercise. It's not spot on um make sure you give that injury time to recover a lot of people struggle to step back they just carry on training training around it um sometimes you just need to give give it time to actually heal and then reintroduce the exercise slowly start off light you kind of have to reprogram reprogram that um the the form so that you're doing it properly and that the body can adjust then and essentially start from scratch with building up the weight until you're doing it with correct form and you'll be back to the same weight that you were at um so that's what I had to do with squats for example um for whatever reason squats seem to trigger the sciatica so we stripped it back we went back to body weight um we changed the form so that I was – I used to squat too deep. I know this sounds silly. Everyone says ass to grass or, you know, you're not doing it properly unless you're doing it super deep. Um, actually, like, it's not always that good to do it super deep because, like, your your glutes will un- stop engaging at the bottom. Um, you know, it's technically 90 degrees is okay, a little bit lower than 90 degrees. So – that's what we did. We reprogrammed my squat so that I wasn't going too deep. Um, but I had to go back to body weight and work up, you know, 10 kilos a side, 20 kilos a side, um, which is nice. It was actually fun because you go through that process, that uh, progressive overload, um, which when you've been lifting for a long time, the progressive o- overload gets less and less and less. Um but starting from scratch, you get those those big big, big jumps sometimes. Um, 
but yeah, form, let it recover. Um, what else? I'm trying to think. You know, treatments like the deep tissue, the massage, the um, sleep is going to help. You need to make sure your sleep is allowing you to recover. Um, certain supplementation is going to help. You know, get make sure you're taking your omegas, your joint health, your multivitamins, etc. Um, yeah, that would be, be my advice. What's one thing that you know now that you wish you knew before you started competing like if you could go back and talk to the alexandra right before you started bodybuilding what would be the best piece of advice you would give her be patient um play the long game it takes years um you know i've been competing for eight years um and I've only had my pro my pro card for one and a half years, two years. But I remember the five years leading up to my pro card. It was almost like I was trying to like rush to get the pro card. Like, yeah, I was motivated, and it it was what I needed to to progress and push forward. But I think maybe the first few years of that, that I was, wasn't was ready for my pro card, but I was still chasing it, chasing it, chasing it. I want my pro card. I want, I'm going to get it. I'm going to get it. Um, and looking looking back, I mean, I'm trying to sort of put this into words. You know, there's a lot of girls who are chasing a pro card and not necessarily ready. Take the time. Take the time to be pro ready and then go for your pro card. Um and remember to enjoy the process because it's going to take you years, um, years of sacrifice, years of you know training it six days a week or five days a week, all the times that you're not going to be able to go for like I don't know social occasions because you're dieting or there's so much sacrifice. Um, yeah. Take time. Be patient. <laughs> it, well, exactly. I've seen so many people that just burn out so much because they go so hard and they don't allow themselves time to rest and recuperate. Or they're like you and they go on a 26-week prep where, good God, more power to you again, everyone, that she was able to do that. But I asked you this question last time, and I'm going to ask you every single time you come on the podcast, someone walks up to you and says you can change one thing about the sport of bodybuilding and everyone would go along with it, would be one thing you'd like to see changed. I remember you asking me this last time. Um, one thing that I could change more shows in the UK with women's physique because there are zero. Wait, there's literally uh, zero? No, not one. Wow. Um, actually, okay, I tell a lie. There was one. There was one in 2022 at the Arnold's. That has now been finished, done, they won't be holding that again. There is a there is a show that they're putting on in March, which I believe is run by the same people who organise Ohio. They haven't announced the divisions. But if you look on the 2023 um, schedule for shows, for competitions, Pro League, there's nothing in the UK. So yeah, it'd be, it'd be nice if if something could be done to boost that in the UK for women's sport, I mean, that's physique. I don't even know what female bodybuilding. I doubt there is any as well. I think figure is on the very low side. But then bikini, wellness, you've got plenty of shows, I think. Um, I might be wrong. I'm not, I'm not too sure, but. Just bodybuilding in general in the UK, it'd be it'd be nice if we were putting on something like Portugal or, you know, representing the British bodybuilders. There's a huge community of us. Sorry, my face. I mean, with all the stuff that's been going on, like you said, with the less shows and everything, were you ever considering maybe just downsizing so you could get more opportunities to compete? The thought crossed my mind. 
you know when I when I got my pro card I got the option to choose do I want to go physique which is what I got my pro card in or do I go figure um and I actually you know I I had two wins at the Arnold I won both the categories but it was physique that I got my pro card and I chose physique because for me when I train it's always fueled by the thought of progressing um so when I train I want to train I want to go heavier I want to do more reps every time I I chase the numbers I for me that's a massive part of why I love it um but if I was to go for figure there's parts of my physique that would need to downsize I was already um before I decided to do physique I was holding back on my training because there were areas that couldn't get any bigger, didn't need to. And for me, that took away that love of of training and and being able to chase and and push. And um, so, yeah, that's why I chose physique. Um, And plus, I love the routine. I love the power, the femininity that, you know, combined. I love all that. Um, I think it's beautiful. So that's physique, why I chose it. Were you kind of freaking out a little bit in Portugal when they announced that you had to do your routine? Because you were mentally thinking like, oh, I don't have to do my routine. Was it a little, how'd you deal with that? (laughs) It was. um, And like with my routine, unfortunately, there's no footage yet of the routine. Um, We weren't allowed to film on our phones. So, um, and I purchased the the package, the, you know, the video and the, the photos, but they didn't video the routine. Um, I was nervous because I'd chosen a song that wasn't a, the type of music that people normally pose to. Um, I chose a, a classical uh, ballet piece, Black uh, Black Swan. Is it Black Swan? Yeah, the ba- you know the ballet orchestral music, and it was very slow and and gentle and feminine, um, whereas the girls tend to pose to more like rock and power and so I was a bit, you know, nervous going in, thinking, "Are they going to like it? This is this is different." But on the same, um, you know, opposite to that, it was, "Oh, I'll stand out at least," because I'm doing something different. Um, and my bikini was themed to the style of the music, with the, you know, it was soft colours, and and my hair was done with the the with that theme as well. So I don't know if you've seen. Um, Oh, Swan Lake, not Black Swan, sorry. Swan Lake is what I was thinking. If you've seen the movie, it's all ballerinas and the hair is up. And so that was all thought out as well. Did you go on your tippy toes at all? Yes, I did. And I did a ballet move as well. I did kind of like... The plie? Yeah. Yeah. So I was already nervous. And when I, I went backstage after comparisons and I kind of had a bit of a relief. Like, okay, I didn't. I don't have to deal with that now. And then they called me and I was like, oh, my gosh, I'm going to have to do it. But I did it and it went really well. And um, I got a few tears from the crowd, which was like, I never get tears. So, ooh. <laughs> um, yeah, and it was great. And everyone seemed to think it was it paid off doing something different. So. The tears were people crying that it was over. I mean, they're like, thank God, this is this is done. Tears, no, no, sorry, I'm d- no, I'm just I'm just kidding. But so what in, what inspired <laughs> tears, you? Yeah. What inspired you to make such a unique routine and have a different set, set of music? Was did someone put it in your ear? Or were you just thinking I want to do something different? What inspired you? Cuz that's the first time I've ever heard someone actually do that type of music specifically for yeah. a show. I mean, I've always loved posing. I think, you know, I think of it as an art form. Um, it, it's beautiful. There's, a, you know, there are quite a few pros in, in, the, in the industry that, you know, they just make it. Um, it's, it is an artwork. Um, so I wanted to present something like that, something that was more than just a routine, that, it, you know, it made the people feel something and feel what I felt you know, my passion towards what I do, towards bodybuilding. Um, and I thought, well, pro debut, I need to stand up. I want them to see me, notice me. Here we go. Let's do it. Um, yeah, and that's why. <laughs> no, I mean, that's that's awesome. And that's 
great that you're able to do that. And I mean, yeah, it's so great talking to you again. I mean, it's been like a year and a half since we last had you on. Granted, everyone, it is now about 1 a.m. right now where I'm at right now. But again, Alexandra, I cannot thank you enough for coming back on and just giving us an update. And I can't wait to hear from you again in a year or so again. And good God, the improvements that you made the last time we're on to a year from now, I don't even know what you're even going to look like. So I'm just excited to see that myself. But again, thank you so much for coming back on. It was awesome. That's all right. Well, thank you so much for having me. It's been it's been great to reminisce over the last you know, the last two years to compare from the Arnolds to now. Um, yeah, I can't wait for you guys to have the next update of the journey because it's, you know, it's really exciting going forward, you know, the improvements that I plan on making. Um, yeah, so we'll see next year if we can if we can meet up again on here and go over it again. Oh, you ever come over to the States, you let me know if there's any shows close by because I'm starting to, I'm starting to reach out a little bit more and go to, I was going to be at Chicago this weekend, but then I had some family stuff that I couldn't do, but yeah, it's, yeah, it's always great. Well, to, I'll tell you that it is my dream to compete in the U S so one day I will be there. Don't you worry. And I'll, I'll let you know when that is. <laughs> yeah. And then maybe I can actually get you some proper American food over there and say those yeah. baked beans on some, I'll get, I'll get you stuff. <laughs> you're, I'll get you to gain that 40 pounds that next day, basically, but <laughs> it won't be on me though. It'll be on your own volition, but Hey, you know, I, I won't, but again, everyone, you know, we cannot thank her enough and I'll leave a link to her Instagram page down below. And again, everyone, this is Ryan Johnson, DD on the spot signing off. Have a great day, everyone.